So if you watch 70s sci-fi movies, you would think that in 2016 there should be robotic devices running around everywhere and, and you don't see them. And there's a reason for this and the reason for that is that motor control is a very, very hard problem to solve and we haven't quite understood how the brain actually solves it. So in my group we are working on how the brain learns motor control, how we uh, control fine movement and especially we're looking at how the brain controls the hand. Um, because the hand is really kind of a fantastic organ. Um, we, can, we can do a lot of things with our hands. So we can carry loads, we can manipulate fine objects, we communicate with people. So in a way our hands is kind of the Swiss army knife of our body parts. So in our lab we're using robotics um, to uh, study human movement. So this is just a tool for us in a way. Um, and uh, so with this robotic device, for example, we can, we can have people hold on to them, make reaching movements, we can perturb these reaching movements and then see how the brain reacts to perturbations, to changes, um, and, and how the brain adapts to, um, uh, to um, and learns um, uh, new movements. Coming here uh, to uh, Western and to Canada, one of the main motivations really was the availability of, uh, that there is a really good MRI group here because that's essential in MRI research not only that you have these devices, but you also have an amazing team of physicists that actually support this. Um, and so in my lab, we are developing a lot of devices that we can use to study human movement in, in, in MRI. So we have a couple of robots, uh, robotic devices that work in the MRI. This is like one of the world's first ones uh, we built. And we have a lot of devices where we can now study hand movements and wrist movements. And so, um, uh, so we really need to push the envelope here about how to acquire this data and how to analyze it ultimately.